So now that you know a little bit about mixed models and how to use them, you might have some questions about how you might use them in the future. So here's an example of a few that we'll talk about. Which parameters should be random? If you have a model with many variables and many parameters associated with it, which one should you set as random? How might you use the equation for individuals not needed in the data set? Or not observed in the data set? And then are mixed models actually ever needed? Well, they might work for other data sets, but are they useful for my data? So the first question, which parameters should be random? To address this question, you can fit several models with random effects, and you can set those random effects on different parameters. After fitting the models, you can evaluate them by assessing the quality of each model. And to do this, you can use something like the Akeki Information Criteria, or AIC, to test which models put and putting those random effects on different parameters is better. And so the AIC is a really valuable tool when you're comparing mixed models to one another. Another question is how might you use the equation for subjects not found in the data set? Now this is an important one. So if we predicted the heights of trees that were found in specific stands and then we nested plots within those stands and we created a mixed model for that, what we have is a great model for predicting the heights of trees that are found in those plots and in those stands. Now, in regression and in statistics, we often want to develop models that we can use outside of our data. Uh, we often collect a lot of information in a study or an experiment, and we want to use those models or use that inference in other studies. And so one way to use the equation for subjects not found in the data set are to, if you're in a new population, you can subsample from the data to get the response variable of interest. And so if we're in another forest, could we subsample the heights of trees that is not necessarily measure every one, but if we subsample them, uh, we can locally calibrate what our random effects might be. Um, and so this is an easy way uh, to not necessarily have to measure the heights of everything and do a lot of time and effort that goes into that, but to locally calibrate your model based on your local conditions. Another way is to simply set the random effects to zero. Now this is exactly the same thing almost as using a, like an ordinary least squares model where all we have is beta zero or beta one. And we can think of those values as fixed effects. And so in this case, we could just use the fixed effects for prediction and set the random effects equal to zero. This is a common approach too, um, and it all really depends on how well it performs with the data and if you wanted to do that. Another valid question to ask is, are mixed models needed? The good thing about mixed models is that they can take into account the hierarchy of the data. They work well for nested designs. But sometimes we are often interested in what we call a parsimonious model, or a model that does exactly enough things, but no more. So to examine this, you can try fitting a model with and without random effects. And then those various model forms can be evaluated with AIC, or some sort of likelihood ratio test. In the case of, say, predicting tree heights, the lower AIC values for mixed models might indicate that the random effects are useful in the predictions. And so again, if you kind of fit different models and compare them with AIC, that's a really useful way to compare whether or not mixed models are actually needed. Two popular R packages for doing mixed models are LME4 and NLME. And so LME4 is great for linear mixed models and generalized linear mixed models while NLME uh, fits and compares linear and nonlinear mixed effects models. And so there's a lot of great resources. I point to one uh, that's another useful start for learning how to do linear mixed models in R. And this is a quick snapshot of the successes and, and reasons why you might choose to do linear mixed models.